some ideas are clearly better than some other ideas. Uh, all the way back in 1892, Thomas Edison and William Dixon had an idea to use a newly developed 35mm film in motion pictures. Now ever since different shapes and formats have appeared and disappeared, but this early idea of using 35mm has really proven to be the right one and it is still the format to be used in motion pictures. And it was only later when people started to experiment with this 35mm film in still photography. Oscar Barnack, a German optical engineer, perfected the use of 35mm in still photography when he developed his first Leica cameras. So what we consider the standard format for film photography actually started in motion pictures. But these both were clearly good ideas. But then there are also plenty of really bad ideas. John DeLorean, a former GM executive, later a failed cocaine dealer, wanted to create a sports car. And he had an idea to build it out of stainless steel and Renault engines. So he hired a bunch of Irish fishermen to build those cars with the government money. Now, eventually, that and his new line of business with pharmaceutical, those weren't really good ideas. Or let's take this one. This is uh, a monotribe, an instrument that didn't quite make it. Makes interesting noises. But it's really primitive. The keyboard is for Mickey Mouse, uh, there's no MIDI, and the sequencer is only eight steps. Commercially, this wasn't really a good idea. Or then think about David Hasselhoff, not as a night rider, but as a singer. Didn't quite make it, not really a good idea. So with these less than good ideas, it's sometimes interesting to try to make something out of them. I mean, they made an entire movie featuring DeLorean. And this monotribe has a loyal fan base that does all kind of things, soldering and hacking these, like, look, I put a MIDI into it. Or then there are people who follow David Hasselhoff and collect his music and Well, I don't think that is true. So here is then the idea. What if you would create a motion picture camera that would use this tried and true 35 millimeter film, but it would cost only 50 euros. Now this sounds like an interesting and good idea. And here it is. This is Lomokino 35, a full blown movie film camera. So basically, you just use regular 35mm film. And then you crank it to shoot your movies. The fine precision mechanism advances it. And every time there's a click, it takes a picture. It uses the film like this. So on one roll of film, you can get about 140 frames. Now, if you want to shoot with the frame rate of an iPhone, the roll will last two seconds. You gotta have a really good screenwriter to tell a story in two seconds. But if you simply crank it slower, you get longer movies. Uh, this is pretty much my rhythm and it takes about three frames per second. So that's the first obvious challenge. It is all plastic construction, but you can set the aperture 
from 5.6 to 11 you can shoot close distance by pushing the lens forward like this and it has even a flash sync so you can shoot with the flash it has an indicator that shows how much film you have left but it is absolutely useless because I have no film in it and it shows that I have half of the film left so I don't know what it measures it has a viewfinder that pops up like this and then if you didn't have a nose you could use it but now it hits your nose so you can't really aim and crank at the same time but hey what do you expect 50 euros I use a cheap tripod small tripod underneath it so now it's a little bit more doable The biggest problem though is that the mechanism is highly unreliable. Uh, it breaks the film, it uh, destroys the sprockets and that really is a bit annoying. But then again, art is created through trials and tribulations. So This is the tool, but this is not all. To create a right movie experience, I wanted to also have right film. So I went and bought myself a few rolls of Kodak Double X 5222 film. Now this is the most famous black and white uh, motion picture film. Movies like Manhattan, The Schindler's List and Raging Bull were shot on this film. And significant parts of Casino Royale, Kill Bill and Memento were also shot on this film. So there is some heritage here. So I put the link down there uh, for you if you want to buy this film. There's this guy who hand spool these films for you. And you know, these are reasonably priced. So if you want to try a really true heritage film, that's the way to go. And this is not all, not even close. The genuine film camera, accurate film, requires the right kind of sound engineering. And for that I used an analog dictation machine and a genuine analog tape. And I recorded all the soundtracks using this device, uh, using the slowest possible speed to get some feeling and some inner me into the forthcoming movie films. Like the DeLorean car, like the musical production from the Knight Rider, uh, David Hasselhoff, this all sounds like a very good idea, but uh, it is the end results that really matter. So here is the premiere of the next Hollywood blockbuster, Penny Lane. Get your popcorns ready.
So this film took two rolls of double X. And now since we are on this, let's take another movie too. This is something that I shot last summer. It has a slightly different vibe to it. Lomokino 35 Super Movie Maker Gloriously Analog Is this a good idea? I could probably live with the image quality the limited number of frames I can get on one roll the really bad viewfinder But what really annoys me is that the film transport is so buggy and bad that it destroys one third of my films. But then again, with 50 euros, shouldn't expect miracles. See you at the next Oscars.